Hello animators and welcome to Intros to Animations using Adobe Anime. So my name is Adriel and I'll be your instructor here, also known as Blender Savage, and I'll show you how to use Adobe Anime. So let's get started. Quick introduction here. So Adobe Anime used to orig originally be called Future Splash Animator. Then later got renamed to Flash and a lot of people have heard of Flash and now it's called Adobe Anime. Uh, maybe some of you are familiar with the Flash games. Back when I was growing up, there were websites that would host video games that you could play on the website, and they're still around. There was then, and they're still now, and they're still made with Adobe uh, Animate. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of web browsers, such as uh, Google Chrome, no longer support Flash, so they're working ways around that. Sorry, Adobe no longer supports uh, Flash. Uh, <clears throat> Adobe Animate is heavily used in the industry when it comes to animation. Uh, if you're familiar with Bob's Burgers, Peppa Pig, Family Guy, and Arthur, all of those were created using Adobe Animate. And there are other cartoons out there that you've probably heard of that were also made with Adobe Animate. All right, so quick intro there, a little background on Adobe Animate. Now to get started with Adobe Animate itself. So when you first launch Adobe Animate, you might get something like this, a little splash window here. And usually people click do not show again and then skip. But I'm going to leave it there because I can always come back here and watch these videos. These are tutorials how to use some of the stuff here or as a beginner i honestly do not recommend this if you have no experience using any animation software or a creative software it could be way over your head i would say if you're an intermediate learner maybe after you take a class uh, or some way in, some way in the middle some at some point in the middle of the class you can watch these and then it'll make a lot more sense to you versus somebody just using adobe animate for the first time so i'm going to uh, click on skip to leave those in all right, so then I get a window like this, and cool. Here's some more tutorials here, down here at the bottom. There they are. And these are also found in the, found in the official Adobe Animate uh, YouTube channel. They have these tutorials there as well. So um, if you can't find them here, you can always find them in their official YouTube channel. Here's the official Adobe Animate uh, YouTube channel page, and it is called Adobe Animate. There's the Adobe Animate uh, logo right in the icon there, because there's lots of other uh, channels. Have them, or if uh, you perform a search for Adobe Anime, you get all these other ones. These are not uh, the official Adobe Anime page. So you want to use the one that says Adobe Anime if you want to use um, the source itself. Uh, not to knock these down, but these are also useful as well. But just a heads up that there's one official one and these other people just like me, other YouTube creators that also provide tutorials for Adobe Anime. And the more you learn, the more you practice, the more you challenge yourself, the better you will get. I guarantee it. All right, so there's those there, and there's those uh, tutorials again. And well, I'm not gonna use these, and I'm gonna be your provider here, I'll be your instructor here. I'll be the one providing the, uh, the instruction. So I'm gonna click on create new here on the left so I can create a new project. If I go to open, I can open uh, old uh, projects that I have here saved on my computer or flash drive. All right, create new, there we go. And now I get this window here, and these are presets. So these are preset as in the height and, and width ratio have already been uh, chosen for you, depending on what you click on. So you don't have to play around with that. You can choose one of these and it'll adjust it for you. The frame rate, 30 frames per second. That means uh, if it was a flipbook animation, there'd be 30 pages from a flipbook in one second or a frame in a film, like in a film reel, a little frames, little pictures in there. That'd be 30 of those in one second. That's the speed right there. Platform type, ActionScript 3.0. That's the one we'll be using for my class. HTML5 Canvas, that's for a website. So we're just making videos here. Uh, there are other ways to support the website besides using the HTML5 Canvas, but ActionScript 3.0, uh, more familiar than using the uh, HTML5 Canvas. If you want to make something for YouTube, you can go up here to social and you can use um, a YouTube uh, default here, a preset. So here's one in 4K, Full HD, HD standard. And if you notice here, the pixel count goes higher. And so the more pixels you have in your screen, the better the quality. So that's why 4K here has higher numbers versus standard or just regular HD. Here's some for Twitter. Here's some for Facebook. I'm gonna go over here to game and get some other ones over here if I wanna make a game. Here's for the different iPhones so that the uh, size of your video will fit nice and neat on that screen. There's the iPad there, Androids, uh, educational videos, depending on your, uh, your platform, what they're viewing it on. For ads, there you go, making a banner, large rectangle, uh, web. So I'm gonna go over here to social, sorry, character animation. And usually I just go with this one. For my class, I don't care what uh, what preset you use unless uh, I tell you otherwise. 
but I really don't mind. So this one is fine with me. Also, as long as it's 30 frames per minute, 30 frames per second, 30 FPS, that's another word for that. And that's what I want in my class. It'll make um, everything a lot easier, but the height with the height, the width, with height ratio, I don't mind. So I'm gonna click create. And then now I'll actually be using Adobe Animate. This was just all to get me into where I'm going right now. And uh, your computer might be experiencing what I'm experiencing now. It's going a little slow. Adobe Animate is very heavy. It's very taxing on your computer. It's a lot that uh, your computer has to remember. So I'm going to wait for this here to go through. There we go. Loading, loading. Cool. Here we go. All right. So my setup here looks a little different than yours. If it's your first time opening Adobe Animate, yours probably looks something like this. Let me change mine real quick. Essentials. Most likely it's going to look like this. Tools on the right. Properties panel here. Timeline and your scene panel here. So if yours looks something like this, and you wanna go up here, because in my class, the way I'm gonna teach it, you're gonna go up here in the upper hand corner, next to the display button, there's a box here, not the one with the arrow, the other one little box here, workspaces. So there are different uh, workstations or workspaces that have been optimized for different purposes. So if I go to designer, it's gonna move these uh, panels around, see? I'm gonna go here again, I like using classic. So back when it was Flash, when I learned how to use this software, this is the layout that, that it had. If you wanted something different, you'd have to rearrange it. Also, if you use Photoshop, your tools will be on the left. If you use Illustrator, your tools will be on the left. So this makes the um, transfer information a lot easier for students experiencing experience using other Adobe software. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, the tools are on the left. That's what this is right here, this panel, this whole section here. That is your toolbar. You can try making it wider by hovering your mouse over the edge of the panel. You can actually do this with all the panels. And once you get the double-sided arrow, you can hold down the left mouse button and drag it out. You know, it's wider, but then now it makes your other panel smaller, right? So I'm going to go back and set a little row of tools there. There we go. If you want to add additional tools to here, you can click on these three buttons. Now here's three little dots. Edit toolbar. And then you can add more in here. So you can drag and drop other tools in there and vice versa. So if you're new, you probably don't have this one here as a warp tool. So I'm going to put it over here. So I'm not going to use that one. See, yeah, I just held down the left mouse button, pull the mouse out, and then let go once I was here. So drag and drop. There we go. And let's click out of there. Oh, I'll have that tool activated. So I'm going to go here to Selection Tool, Selection Tool. For this class, you'll mostly use these two tools here. Selection Tool, Free Transform Tool, and the Shape Tools. And uh, I'll go over that in a bit. Let me cover the other panels. The next panel right here, this is your Timeline Panel. This is to control the time of your animation. These are frames, just like a page in a flipbook animation or a, a frame in a film reel. Those are frames. And here you can have layers. Right now there's one layer. So you can stack up animations on top of animations and things like that. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Uh, here's your player keys. You can play your animation. Uh, skip forward to another frame. Uh, you can loop your animation here so you can review it. You can also zoom in and out of these here by holding down your mouse and dragging right here. There you go. So zoom into the frame, zooming out. Got a lot of frames there. Most animations in this class will not be too long. We're not going to go over here and make a 300 frame animation. Let's we'll keep them short. And over here on the right side, this section here, the properties panel. Uh, it's not this. This is something different. These are other tools that are hidden in here. It's like a hidden menu, like a drawer. You got to click on one of these, you can open it up. See? And then I can hide this if I click here. Sorry, expand it if I click there. And then there's other tools down here. Now I'm gonna put that away. Cool. All right, and then right here, there's a properties panel and you can uh, further format whatever you have here on your scene. Uh, right now, these are not selectable because I don't have a tool here selected. I have a tool selected, then tool here selected. If I create an object, an object here will be available so I could select it and I have nothing inside my frame. So if I had something in this frame, then that would be selectable. But right now, all I can do is just change my document here. So right here, this white square that I have here, I can use this uh, scroll bar here. That is my stage. That is my stage, this big white box here. That is what my viewer will see. So whatever I create, it's going to be inside of this box. So this actually has the height-width ratio from the presets. So uh, width, uh, 1,280 pixels left to right, and then height, 720 pic uh, pixels up and down there. I can zoom out of this. I can click in here inside this percentage. I can type in 80, double click, 80, enter. There we go, I zoom out. Sometimes you might end up like this. This happens a lot as a new uh, new animator. 
go ahead and click on these uh, target sites here and it'll center it for you. There we go. You can also try using this one here, rotation tool. You can do stuff like this, but I would not recommend any of that. Let me undo that. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, and Control Z here is not working. So it looks like I'm gonna have to manually do it here, bring it back. Control Z is the undo button. Undo, universal undo button, Control Z. Hold down Control first and then hit the Z key and then let go of Z and then Control. There we go, so I got that done there. And now I am gonna go back to the selection tool so I can turn that tool off. There we go, selection tool, turn that tool off. I don't have to worry about that tool. All right, so let's uh, make a quick animation here. So I'm just gonna show you guys here so you can see the uh, different tools that I can use. So I'm gonna make a little building, I'm gonna make a house. So I'm gonna click right here on this square. That's a rectangle tool, click there. And now I can make a rectangle. If I wanna make other shapes, I have to hold down the mouse right here, hold down the left mouse button on the little arrow there. Then I get other shapes. So you can oval tool to make circles and a polystar tool to make stars or other polygonal shapes. So I'm gonna go with rectangle tool here and I'll make a building, I'll make a house. And right here I got fill and I got stroke. Fill will be the main color here on the inside of my square that I'm gonna make or rectangle. Stroke will be the border on the outside of my building here. So a greenhouse with the black border on the outside. I don't know, I don't see too many greenhouses, not this bright green color. So I'm gonna click in there. I want the lighter blue color, something. This one's cool right there. I'm gonna go with that color there. And I'm just gonna have that tool selected. Chose the colors here for it. I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button and drag across there and make a building there. And I'll maybe make it something like that. There we go. Cool, so I got a building there. And then there's my outline there. Let's say you wanna make the outline thicker. You want to make it wider, but you already made your house here. So what you want to do is go over here to the selection tool. And then you can double click the outside here, the outside border. Or you can double click the inside of it. And it selects the whole thing. So these are different segments. See, I just clicked in there one time and I selected the inside. I can pull it out. But I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit Control Z undo. So don't be afraid to experiment. You can always hit Control Z to undo. I'm going to click on the side of it here. But only selects that one segment there. And I can pull that out as well. But I don't want that. Undo. So I'm going to double click the outside. You can select only the border. Here in the properties panel, now I can format that border there. Stroke. I can make it a transparent. Pull down that, that percentage there. See if I don't want to do that. Undo. I want to do. Oh, see, it disappeared. Oh, no, what happened? Don't worry. It's up here. Object. Click on object on the object tab right here. Properties panel, and it's back. Now I want to increase the stroke size here. I can make this thicker right there. There we go. 10. That's cool. That's cool. Click there. Oh. The transparency, forgot about that. Let's see what happened there. Transparency back to 100. There we go. I didn't know, control Z far enough. And then these are just how it um, clips off in the corners. I can change the different styles here, make it look like it was drawn, see? But I'm just gonna go with the regular default stuff here. There we go, all right. And let's see, you wanna make a roof? That's not much of a house, isn't it? It's more like, um, like a skyscraper. So let's make a roof, make a little pointy roof. I'm going over here to rectangle tool. Hold it down, hold down the left mouse button towards the lower right corner there, and go to polystar tool. With the polystar tool right now, I can make a uh, polygon. I don't want a polygon. So let me go over here, selection tool, double click it. I make a pentagon, that's what that is, pentagon, and delete it. I'm going to click back on the polystar tool there, and I'm going to go over here. And I have this option here that wasn't there with the rectangle tool. Two options, style polygon. So it was that five pointed polygon, which is the pentagon. I'm gonna click in there and I'm gonna go with, uh, leave it as polygon, leave it as polygon. But number of sides is five. So pentagon has five sides. It's like the pentagon here in the United States. You will have six later with the, with the space force. I'm gonna make this three, so I get a triangle. Click three, enter, there we go. And star point size, leave that as is, or else it's gonna have a weird shape. And the roof, let's go with the gray color. So fill here, I'm gonna go with gray and pull this out and something like that. There we go, cool, I got a roof. I'm gonna go selection tool, double click it and I can move it around, see? All right, so remember earlier I mentioned that this isn't much of a, of a house, so I wanna make it wider. You know, it's a really tall house. I don't know who's gonna live in there. Maybe me, I'm a tall guy. So I'm gonna go here to free transform tool. Just click on that one. Now I'll bring my mouse over here and Let's see, I'm, I'm going to double click the inside of this uh, box here. There we go. And now I have these little dots here, these little squares, little handles with the free transform tool. I can actually use these to make it wider. So I'm going to go over here on this uh, 
these here in the center are not the corner ones because these are to make it bigger taller i can make it wider too but as best practice to reduce your uh, likelihood of error go ahead and grab these ones here in the center hold down the left mouse one and drag it out and make sure you look at the size of your cursor the shape of your cursor because when i go here i get a double sided arrow going left and right if i go here to this corner it's going at an angle go here on the side let's go i got two of them and this will make it uh so i can do this i don't want to do that no earthquakes here undo and if i go over here to the off to the corners away from the corners but uh, near the corners i get a loop and i can rotate it see i can do that you rotate it on degrees undo all right cool so there's my house there and now i can make this uh, roof wider here too to put the roof on my house there we go cool there we go got a nice house oh let me move this over a bit there we go and i can try making a chimney but that's okay i just want this house looking thing here all right let me make my uh timeline panel wider so i'm gonna hover my mouse over here double side arrow pull down cool and uh i'm gonna copy this so i'm gonna go here to actually i can use this one for transform tool double click didn't get everything let me do a drag selection hold on the left mouse button and drag across there we go i got all of that there i'm gonna control c c is in copy i'll make a copy of that so i got a copy of that I'm gonna put one of those in another layer. So I'm gonna lock this one up right here, layer one. I'm gonna lock that up right there, click on the lock. You can click on this lock here, it locks all the layers, which right now I have one layer. I can hover on a mouse in here and I'll get a lock. There we go, lock that. And I'm gonna call this one house in front. House dash in dash front, because it does not allow for spaces. There we go. Oh, doesn't allow for dashes either. So there we go, so underscores. Underscores is the way to go. I'm going to hit the plus sign, and I'm going to call this one house and back. Double click in there. House underscore in underscore back. And there we go. And I already made this copy of it, even though I was going around clicking on stuff. I haven't copied anything else, so I still have that copy. I'm just going to paste it right in here. So I click in there, the control V is in Victor, and it'll paste it. There it is. I'll put this house back there. Maybe make it smaller. It's out in the distance. Hold down the shift key. So I can proportionally scale it down, because I don't hold down shift. And I can get all these weird different shapes. I want to hold on shift as I go down. There we go. And I'll put it back there. And since it's further down the distance, I'll make it a little darker. So I'm going to go here to selection, back to the selection tool. Click out of there. So I'm done with the, making the shape of it. Click inside of it here. And only selects the fill, the inside part. We're here to fill. And look for a darker shade of blue there. And maybe like that. That's cool. I'm going to click the roof here. I'm going to go with the darker gray. I'm going to chose that gray. And let's go with black there we go i'll make a copy of this one here as well so i'm gonna drag select it and to make a copy i can hit Control c Control v see it brings another one out there i can also do this i can uh have the whole thing selected hold down the alternate key a l t right next to spacebar hold on alt hold on your left mouse button on your selection notice it's already all selected and pull out a copy there hold on the left mouse button and drag out let go of the mouse first and then the alternate key there you go let me click away and see it's in front of this one but it's supposed to be in the back right well, didn't i say it's going to be in the back i did check this out this layer right here is actually on top of this layer so i can pull it down so i can put it below the other one i'm going to hold down the left mouse button on it and then drag down there we go so now it's in the back boom i'll make another house back there double click hold down shift double click up here with different parts hold on the alternate key and pull out a copy there there we go i got a whole neighborhood right here hopefully a safe neighborhood all right, I like the neighborhood that I live in right now. So now I'm going to make a car, and I'll have a car go through here. <clears throat> so I'm going to lock these up, and I'm going to add another layer. Click on this plus sign right here, add another layer. Cool, and I'm going to call this one car. I'm going to double click in there. Car. There we go. And let's make a basic little car. So cars are usually a rectangular shape, right? So I'm going to click in here, rectangle car. And for some reason, everybody always wants to make a red car. So let's go with red car. And then the strokes make it a little thinner. I can actually click in here too. Let's go with five. There we go. And I'm just going to make a car right here. There goes my car. And we're going to need a roof. There we go. Cool. I can try making tires or not, but I'll make some tires. So I'm so going to show you guys the oval tool. So I'm going to hold down the left mouse button in there. Oval tool. And my tires, uh, I don't want red rims on my tires, so I'm going to go with the gray color there for the fill. And then the stroke there. I can make it thicker, so I can have some nice thick tires. I want to bit my rims. There we go. And I'm going to make the uh, ovals down here below it. 
I'm not going to make them in here because then I could clip off away from it. See, I'm going to show you what's going to happen here. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to undo that. And I'll make my circles down here, my ovals. And then I'll bring them in. My right, ovals for selecting. And I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and drag across. Then if I hold on shift, I can get a perfect circle. So if I don't hold on shift, then I can make an oval tire. And I don't want an oval tire. I want a nice circular tire. Something like that doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm going to go over here to selection tool and double click the center of it and pull out a copy. Alternate key, hold down the left mouse button and drag out. There we go. And then I'm going to hold on shift, double click this one. Now I got both of them selected and I can just bring them up. And let's see. And then once I commit to where I want them, I can let go of the mouse. Actually, a little cooler inside more. Let me go of the mouse and use the arrows here. There you go. And then if I click away from there, it'll commit to uh, snapping onto the the truck there there we go so now if i try to move them after that uh oh yeah i'm gonna get that i want that undo cool and these other layers are locked up so if i do one of these drag selection boxes that only selects my car nothing else because i lock those up so that i cannot accidentally modify them later later all right i'm gonna make my car go across the stage so i'm gonna right click it and i'm gonna click convert to symbol and the type here i'm gonna go switch over to graphic and the symbol type, I'm just gonna call it car. Center registration, then I'm gonna hit okay. So I right clicked it and select the create symbol. This way it's like one object now. And I can, uh, it's a lot easier for me to animate for what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a class of tween. I'm just gonna have it go across this, uh, the stage here. So let me select where I wanted to start from. Maybe right here. I can try making a road for it and everything, but it's right there. And it's in between these other two layers. So it's gonna go over here, it's gonna be in front of these houses. Then it's going to go behind this house. All right. And I want this to be, well, how long do I want this animation to be? If I go with 30 seconds, sorry, 30 frames, that'll be a one second animation. If I go with 60 frames, it'll be a two second animation. So let's go with three seconds. So it's going to be 90 frames. And we heard a 90 that just dragged over this uh, bar here, scroll bar. And I'm going to right click right here for layer for the car layer. I'm going to right click inside there for frame 90 for that. And I'm going to select insert keyframe, key event. There it is. And the key event is that my car will be on the right side of the stage there. So I'm going to hold on the shift key and drag my car across there. There we go. So point A, I'm over here on the left. And point B, I'm over here on the right. And uh, also what that did, I copied all that frame by frame. I want to copy it all the way to 90. But at 90, so I'm going to notice the dividing uh, line here, this little dividing part, and allow me to create a different uh, different scene, a different scenario for my car. And I want to animate the whole thing going across. See, because right now, from 1 to 89, it's still there at the, at the beginning. All right, and then I lost my buildings. I lost my houses. So that's because those frames haven't been copied over. So let me make this smaller here so you can see. So these frames here have not been copied over. So I'm going to copy them over now. So I'm going to right-click here below this one. Insert keyframe, right click over here for the other one, insert keyframe, there we go, cool. So let me go to frame one, oh, frame one, play button, and then it's gonna just jump over here at the end because I haven't animated this scene. There we go, so now I'm gonna create a classic tween. I'm gonna right click in here, create classic tween. There you go, and so now, by me choosing uh, create classic tween, it'll provide the uh, animation in between point A and point B, keyframe one and keyframe two. Keyframe at, key at frame one and keyframe at frame 90. So I'm hit the play button. There we go. If I click this button here, it'll allow me to loop this so I can see it in a loop. But this is just for me as a viewer, as the, uh, sorry, as the editor, as the animator, not as part of the final product though. There we go, bam. Bam. If you wanna get a preview of the final product, that's gonna be control enter. Control enter. There we go. There's the animation starts again. So this is what your um, uh, viewer will see. This is what the final product will look like. If I put other stuff here in the background, uh, not in that layer, let me lock that layer up, open this one. Put stuff out here um, off to the stage. Did I unlock that layer yet? Let's see. Yeah, it didn't, there we go. I have to be, had to be in that layer. I wasn't in that layer, so it should be in blue. You can make a circle back there. Control enter, you're not gonna see it. It's not there. It's outside of the stage. So that's behind the scenes. That's just for you as the animator, as the creator, producer, whatever title you want to give yourself, the big boss. That's for you to see, not for the final product there. All right. So now if I want to save this, just go to File, Save As. 
and you want to save this as a .fla project. That way you can always come back and work on this project. FLA in short for Flash for what it was originally called. So I'm going to save this real quick. All right, so I just saved that project. And as you can see here, this tab now has the name of the file that I saved it as. So that, that's uh, all I have saved right now is just the Adobe Anime project. I don't have the video. I don't have an animation. It's just this project here that I can always open up again and work, continue working on it. I can change the color of the building, the car, add more stuff to it. But um, if I send this to somebody, they won't be able to open it unless you have Adobe Anime. So if you want to create a video file that you can share on social media, you can send other people so they can see the video and it'll be just a video. They won't be able to edit all this other stuff. It'll be just a video. So to convert this to a video file, MP4, we want an MP4. Go to file, convert to, sorry, export to, export right here. But with video media, uh, not movie, because then it give you a .swift file, which is a file format that's a, that opens up in Adobe Animate. So if you send it to somebody else, they're going to need Adobe Animate to open it up. So you can go with this one, export video media, go with the universally used uh, MP4 file format and remove this check mark here, or it's gonna do it for you. In case uh, there's an issue, you can always fix it. But if you uh, if that's uh, activated there, it's just gonna render with whatever it says here. So format, you go with MP4, MPEG4, you would think it'd be an MP4, but it's gonna be something else like a uh, .3PG or something like that. What you wanna do is uh, scroll here and go over to H.264, this one here, H.264, select that one. Reset default uh, AME, that's okay. Leave everything else as is. Uh, no need for that. So just format here, H.264. Now I'm gonna click export, and uh, it's gonna open up another application. It takes a while for it to open. So you have to be patient here, wait for it to open. Um, it's not gonna immediately open. If you have do not have it installed yet, I think uh, uh, Adobe will install it for you. It will ask to install it. Oh, there it is, cool. Open faster than usual. I'm going to wait a moment for my video file to appear here. There it is. And cool, it says H.264. If it does not say H.264, go ahead and click in here. And then you can choose H.264. If it's grayed out and then it says here that it's done as a check mark, then that's because you chose the option for it to uh, immediately start rendering from the queue. All right, so I got that there. It's still not done. I have to click the display button here. And then it'll be done here in just a moment. And there we go. And there we go, it's done. So that went over to my desktop. So let me go check that out. Here's the video itself. Here it is playing in the VOC, uh, VOC, media, uh, VOC media player. It's a free download on your computer and it plays almost every video format out there. There you go. There's my video. Watch it. You can support the channel by liking, subscribing, uh, hitting a comment, sharing. Anything helps. An awesome day. Bye.